started in 1895 for mechanic Baslev Lowry and bookseller Baslev Clement. Both keen riders, the two friends found it difficult to find spare parts for their German-built bikes. So they decided to have a go at making their own, the Slavia. Thankfully, by the end of the 19th century, they realized that engines were the future and began producing motorcycles like this, the LKB. Lowerin and Clement soon became the biggest bike builders in what was at the time Austria-Hungary. And by 1905, they began turning their attention to four wheels rather than two. And this is what they came up with, the Boaturette A. It produced a whopping seven horsepower and could reach heady speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. Over the next couple of decades, the company's successes continued building well-made cars with a 320-strong workforce until 1924, when a disastrous fire at the LNK factory in Malada Boloslav brought the company to its knees. Thankfully, the following year, the company was saved by a successful Pilsen-based industrial conglomerate, Skoda Works. With this much-needed investment, LNK was rebranded as Skoda, and this was one of the first cars to wear the new badge, the 110. Produced between 1925 and 1929, the 110 wore both Skoda and Lauren and Clement branding and was available in various body styles from saloons like this car to roasters, ambulances and even lorries. By 1928, the company was producing up to 85 cars a day and in 1930, production was expanded with a new facility in Prague. However, with the number of cars being sold declining due to the economic depression, Skoda aimed to boost its sales with a new type of chassis. One such car to make use of this new technology was this, the beautiful popular sport. Renamed as the popular Monte Carlo after finishing second in the 1936 Monte Carlo Rally, this streamlined little coupe put the company into the limelight across Europe as it began to rack up various rally victories around the continent. With other models like the Favorite and the Superb further boosting the company profile, things were looking good until World War II. Following the end of the Second World War, Skoda was a shadow of its former self. Gone were the phaetons and limousines, with the socialist regime now imposed on Czechoslovakia by the Soviet Union, meaning citizens in the Eastern Bloc needed affordable cars like the 1101 and 1200 that the company produced in the 1940s. By the late 50s, though, the company was itching to spice things up a bit. In 1957, Skoda unveiled the stunning 1100 OHC, a two-seater sports car weighing just 550 kilos with a 1.1-litre engine producing 95 brake horsepower. The performance was blistering, and the impossibly elegant roadster went on to re-establish the company in the world of motorsport with various class wins across Europe. With a newly injected sense of fun, the company debuted the Felicia in 1959. And while it was still a cheap car by the standards of Western Europe, it did help to infuse some character into Skoda's fairly sedate lineup. Essentially a two-door convertible version of the Octavia, this cute little soft top still had seating for five and was even available with a detachable plastic hardtop for those cold Czech winters. And it was a huge success, with nearly 15,000 cars rolling off the production line. The Felicia proved that the company's sense of fun and design flair was still present. And by the mid-60s, Skoda was building cars outside. The brand continued to produce quirky rear-engined cars throughout the 70s and 80s, with continued success on rally stages across the globe. But it wasn't until 1987 that the company released a truly mainstream car. For its new Super Mini, the company decided to bring back an old name from its past, Favorit. A huge leap forward in terms of design and engineering from its predecessor, the Estelle, the Favorit placed the engine at the front, driving the front wheels. The body was designed by Batoni, and it went on to become the brand's first true world car, with exports far exceeding anything the company had built before. With the fall of communism, the 
Czechoslovakian government began seeking a strong foreign car brand to take control of state-owned